Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this evening's uh, uh, main slate on DraftKings. Uh, I'm going to be going solo. Uh, Bobby is out, so I'm going to try to take care of the slate on my own. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the weather to see if there's anything I need to be concerned with. And yes, so right off the bat, Boston... Chicago um, has dealing with some showers. Atlanta at Cincinnati, dealing with some showers. Kansas City at Detroit, leading with some showers. Um, and New York at Cleveland with some showers. Wow. So there's a lot going on here uh, from a weather perspective. So, you know, stay on the ball and, and, and keep a lookout for that. And remember my, my philosophy on attacking weather games is different than some people. Um, I'll just, I'll just full fade it. Um, for me, uh, I just have this idea of, of getting a zero. <laughs> and when you factor in the zeros, it doesn't really make up for the, the small amount of times that, you know, you get excessively lower ownership on a game that does go um, on a team that you really have to have. So um, probably if these remain kind of orange, the Boston at Chicago, Atlanta, at Cincinnati, KC at Detroit, New York and Cleveland, I'm inclined to full fade them unless one team, unless there's something that really, really stands out. And we'll, and we'll get to that. But that's, that is my philosophy on these, uh, on these slates for better or for worse. All right. So um, first thing normal, uh, as usual, I'm going to be basing my analysis off of my, at least my early projections, um, which I put on truedfs.com for premium subscribers, which is kind of a blend of industry projections, plus my own take on some of them. And uh, that's only for paying customers. And, but I am going to be kind of using those as the foundation of my analysis here. And also I do kind of recommend that you don't, you know, take what I say as gospel. In other words, I'm going to go over who I think the best plays are, but that doesn't mean you should play them. Remember in GPPs, I mean, you want to, you know, look for, look for, for uh, uniqueness. You want to find leverage. And I will attempt to identify some low owned plays, but uh, this is really just kind of a framework of what types of pitchers, you know, look good, which types of stacks look good relative to my rankings as of now. But I do encourage you to kind of follow up later on in the day, whether it be during our live stream, I don't know if we're running one today, or at least updated projections and updated analysis. And Bobby's going to put stuff on there as well, but I am going to go through this. I will do it game by game. Why not? Just to kind of see. So right off the bat, you have uh, who the guy who rates for me to be the top pitcher on the slate by a pretty decent amount. Um, actually, I would say by a pretty huge amount, and that would be Corbin Burns. Um, he's 10-6, and he's showing up for me as the top pitcher by a country mile. Um, the other side, Contreras, uh, maybe on another slate on another day, but but not on this slate and not on this day. Um, let me see if there's anything hitting wise that floats my boat, so to speak in this game. Um, no, I does not look like I'm getting to either Pittsburgh. I can't even get to Milwaukee. See, Milwaukee is usually cheap enough that they show up in value, but yeah, I guess I have them rated fifth if that means anything to you. So yeah, for me, I do have uh, them rated fifth. And when you see who I have rated above them, um, you might actually move Milwaukee up to, you know, near the top of the list actually, because I have the, the Coors game above them and they're, that's probably gonna be really chalky. And then I have Detroit rated above them and who wants to play Detroit. And then I have kind of a high on Minnesota. So maybe Milwaukee is actually a, a good sneaky little play here. I mean, they've been putting up runs all over the place in Pittsburgh recently. And if the weather holds, uh, similarly, uh, this could be a decent environment. So I actually do like Milwaukee. And the guys I would highlight there are Colton Wong, Rowdy Telez, um, always Christian Yelich, McCutcheon, Taylor, Adamas, Orioles, basically everybody. Um, so I do like Milwaukee and I do like uh, – Burns just to start off with. Okay. Um, Yankees at Cleveland, you have Cole against Savali and listen, I, I don't, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Um, 
uh, I'm just reporting this, but um, I was going to say, oh, am I sharing the right screen here? Hold on a second. Let me stop sharing for a second. Let me just make sure. Share screen. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't really have coal rated anywhere near Burns on this slate. Um, so that that's the way it is. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but so if you're going to get coal at 30% ownership as it usually is, um, as scary as this is, I think I want to fade it. Um, he's not done anything wrong. I mean, pitches 100 pitches a game and he's got a 25, a 35, a 27. He had one blow-up game and a 36. I don't know exactly why I'd want to fade him, but uh, according to my numbers right now, I think what it is that Burns is, is so much better play that unless you can somehow get them both in, which at this price is kind of kind of tough, unless you want to play stuff like like Detroit, you know, which might rain out, <laughs> um, or a really chalky Colorado, Arizona. Um, I don't think you can really play both these guys anyway. So I guess that's why the coal ownership is, is not going to be quite as high as it usually is. Um, but in any case, I, I do like Burns. Uh, I don't like Cole that much, so I'm probably going to fade that. Um, let me see with respect to the stacks. Um, see if I like either of these. First of all, I don't like Savali at all. Uh, it's the Yankees. I do have the Yankees rated on a raw basis, my fourth favorite stack. Um, and on a value basis, they're really not ranked that well at all. Um, but let me see what their ownership kind of looks like here. I mean, their ownership looks very reasonable. I guess they must be really expensive. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, look at this. You get Aaron Judge at 6,400. Wow. Stanton, 5,500. Look what you have to do. If you want to play, say, Burns and Yankees, and let's say you do want to stack everybody. Um, Aaron Hicks at 2,700. Okay, so that works. <laughs> um, Rizzo, 5K, and who would be the fifth guy? Donaldson, for example. Can you do this? I mean, you, I mean, you could do it. <laughs> I think about this, right? I mean, if you find a cheapo pitcher and then fill in the rest with kind of with, 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 with fishies, I guess you could. And, and the reason why is because Donaldson's cheap at 4,200 and, and Hicks at 2,700. I mean, that's, that's uh, listen, he hasn't been doing all that great, but what the hell? I mean, he's, it's only 23, 2,700 on the Yankees. Again, Savali, who's not really that great. So, um, yeah, I, I, let's see. Let's see if we can't find a pitcher and other players that can make this work because I do, I do like the Yankees here. And remember, you're dealing with Colorado chalk uh, that you want to try to fade. Um, so why not? Uh, let's, look, let's move on to Texas against the Mets. Um, all right, Bassett against Otto. Uh, I actually do like Bassett here. I have him as actually right now my preferred, believe it or not, my preferred SP. Well, that's actually not true. I have another SP too I like better. But I have Bassett very similar to Cole for some reason um, and lower owned. So I would be more inclined to play Bassett over Cole. And just saying that sounds so bizarre. <laughs> I don't know, but that's just the way I have it right now. And if you play Burns and Bass, and now, now you can't do that Yankee stuff because you're overpaying for this you know, second pitcher. But, you know, if you wanted to pay down for other guys, you could play Burns and Bassett, for example. Um, I don't like any of uh, – I don't like the Glenn Otto play. Take a look at the, the stacks here. Um, yeah, I'm not really getting to either the Mets or – the Rangers, let me just double check that. No, not really. So for me, it's just going to be Bassett um, or nothing from this game. And it allows us to move on to a, a rain game. Uh, that would be Kansas City against Detroit. Let me just remind myself of what these weather situations were. And one of them was it actually Yankees Cleveland, which is a little annoying, actually. Um, in that... If this game gets postponed early, 
you know, all the coal ownership that I was going to try to fade just is going to go right to Bassett, which is a little bit annoying. But I'm kind of hoping that they play the game um, and then either suspend it after they start it or just they just play it and Cole doesn't do well. Uh, the other kind of orange game, the Kansas City at Detroit, um, that's a, kind of annoying because as I kind of alluded to before, um, there is a little bit of value on the Detroit side of this game. Um, but let's take a look and see. You have all my raw stuff over here. Um, first, let's take a look at the, uh, the pitching. You have Pineda just coming off of the injured list. Um, it's supposed to be limited, so I wouldn't be worried about it even if I did like him. And you have Brad Keller at 5,700. Is that a bad play? If it goes? I don't think this is a bad play. As a matter of fact, I think Brad Keller, if this game plays, is actually a really good play. Um, again, you want to try, if you want to get up to teams like the Yankees, for example, um, you're going to need to save with your second pitcher. And I think Brad Keller is totally reasonable. I, get, I think I do. I want this game to play. You wonder why? Because if this game plays, I think Detroit might get some ownership because they're showing up for me is probably pretty good value. Um, and I, want, I think I want to play Brad Keller here, as, as sick as that is. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this game as well. And uh, I have Brad Keller as a very, very legit SP2. As a matter of fact, I would go so far to say I have him as kind of the premier spend down. Premier? I don't know if you use the word premier, but I mean, I, I definitely would consider using him. And as I mentioned also, though, if the game plays, Detroit on the other side does, uh, does, does grade out well, as the kids like to say. Um, you get Victor Reyes, Riley Green, uh, Candelario, Miggy, Spencer Torkelson, um, Robbie Grossman, Javi Baez. Um, so you could definitely do that. Uh, and if you want to double pay up for pitcher and this game does go, um, yeah, then it's certainly reasonable. All right, moving on to the chalk of the day, which is going to be Arizona at Colorado. Um, and currently I have, we'll get back to the pitching, I guess, but currently I have Arizona rated as the top overall value on the slate. And then I have Colorado as second. Um, it's not the same type of gap and discrepancy as we had when the Dodgers were playing in Colorado, which obviously makes sense because the Dodgers are much better than Arizona. So I have Arizona by a couple of percentage points better than Colorado, who's only a couple of percentage points better than the next group. So if these guys do end up being extremely high owned, I think you could fade this. Um, and that's, I guess, where I'll leave it. Actually, I'll go through the, 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 the preferred guys at the position. Um, I have Alec Thomas, Buddy Kennedy, David Peralta. Uh, do you even play Rojas? Marte. I have no real preference of all these guys, whatever you could fit in your lineup. Um, but again, just, just really be careful of the ownership here. Um, uh, and on the Colorado side, the usual suspects, Connor Joe, um, Ryan Blackman, excuse me, Ryan McMahon, Charlie Blackman. Those would be my preferred guys, but you could five-man stack this. Uh, and as far as the pitching goes, uh, Merrill Kelly against Sensatella. Um, you know, Sensatella has been pitching in Colorado forever. He, he has his Colorado tricks, um, so to speak. So that's yet another reason why I don't necessarily want to go crazy with Arizona. I mean, look, here is home games. We gave him one run against San Diego, San Diego, three against Cleveland. All right, he got smoked against Miami. What else? Um, gave up zero runs against – oh, no, he didn't pitch against San Francisco. I don't know what that's all about. Um, three runs to Washington, one run to Cincinnati. Um, so do you really want to be pounding on a chalky Arizona stack against this guy? I don't know. Um, Merrill Kelly on the other side, I don't like him as far as a pitching option. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think I like Colorado as a hitting stack more than the, 
Do I like them more than the Arizona side? No, I, I think I kind of hate them both. I mean, they're, they're both showing up as, as really, really chalky. And I'm, I'm just kind of inclined to do something else. That's the best I can describe this. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Baltimore against Minnesota. First of all, pitching wise, boy, I don't know why he just refuses to show up as a good play ever, but actually that's not true. He's showing up as an okay play. So, so Joe Ryan at 8,800, I think is, is, is definitely in play as a lower owned pitcher, you know, uh, you know, assuming that, that, that you do want to, you know, spend up for some hitting you, and you don't want to play say Burns and Cole or something like that, or even Burns and Bassett. I think saving the one K to play Joe Ryan certainly makes sense. Um, and he rates for me is kind of okay which is good enough for me. I mean, he's, he's not going to be that highly owned. So I think he's very reasonable. And then on the other, in the other side of the plate, so to speak, um, same side of the, of the dugout. Uh, I think Minnesota is, is one of the premier stacks on the board. Um, I don't think that's going to be anything um, particularly earth shattering. I think people are going to own this, but currently I have them. Yeah, I, I actually do have them as the third highest behind Arizona and Colorado. You know, Spencer Watkins is, is definitely someone that DFS players like to attack with hitting for good reason. Um, and that's why Minnesota is showing up as a really good play. So you have Byron Buxton. You have. Uh, who else? Better play? Garlic looks really good. Um, Kepler, Arias, Corey. I mean, pretty much whoever you want. But Minnesota does look like, you know, very, very, almost the really obvious pivot, right? It's, and the way I have these guys ranked, I have Arizona, then Colorado, then Minnesota, and then a drop to say Yankees, Mets. Wow, you know, I didn't even realize that. I actually did have the Mets as, a, as an okay stack in that Mets-Texas game. I don't know why I didn't talk about that. But it's not great. Um, actually... Take a look at the value rankings over there. I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's, I guess that's why I didn't bring it up. They're not, it's not that great. But Minnesota looks like the really, really obvious pivot there. So watch the ownership, but that's a extremely strong. I think Ryan is actually a pretty strong pivot as well. Okay, so we have no hit Javier, right? Um, so Javier coming off of a 13K performance and 45 fantasy points. Uh, and now he's playing the Angels. He's pitching against the Angels at home. Right now, he is showing up on my board as the second best pitcher uh, on the slate by a pretty wide margin, as a matter of fact. Um, so if you want to go with my projections and just kind of make a really good play, you know, you should do that. But I am definitely not doing this. And for those of you who have been following my, my thought process for the last, you know, however long I've been doing this, there's just literally not a chance in hell I'm playing a guy off of a uber ceiling performance like that. Okay. 13 Ks, one walk are you, against the Yankees on the road. Are you kidding me? And he's going to come home and get the big standing ovation. No, thanks. So someone, someone else is going to play this and it ain't going to be me. Um, all right. So with respect to the hitting though, let's see if either Houston or, the angels are going to show up for me. Mm, when I rank them by raw. Yeah, sure. Why not? I have, I have Houston as just the bottom end of that nice, that pivot range. You know, my pivot range being Minnesota Yankees, Mets and, and Houston. I do have Houston as a very legitimate pivot range there. And it looks like what it's going to be a bullpen game. Is that it? No, he's against Lorenzen. And I don't mind at all playing hitters against Lorenzen. So uh, Houston is very, very legit uh, as far as the stack here goes. And I currently have them not very highly owned. Um, I imagine is because they're expensive, right? Let's take a look at some of these prices. I mean, I, I can't imagine. Altuve 5,500, Bregman, four, Bregman only 49. Pena, we have to see if he's playing. He was not playing Thursday. Mouth laceration, I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure it'll be okay. 
And then in the outfield, oh, you, so you have Alvarez day to day and he didn't play Thursday. I was part of the collision. So we're going to have to look at this because obviously if, if um, you know, I want to play these guys um, if I'm playing the Houston Stacks. So watch for Alvarez, watch for Pena being in or out of the lineup. And the other one is um, I like, especially against the righty, would be Kyle Tucker. So I do think that Houston is very, very legit here. Um, San Diego, LA. Boy, this is a little odd. Uh, oh, actually, it's not that odd. I was going to say, why do I not have, um, what's his name, uh, Snell showing up as a good play? And that's because he's against the Dodgers. Now, if Bobby were, were here, he would remind everybody that he did own the Dodgers in the playoffs into it with, with, with supreme efficiency. Uh, but I, 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 am, I, am, I am not doing that. But uh, what I'm not doing is I'm not going to play the Dodgers either. So it's one of those cases where both these pitchers are just good enough to keep me off the other team. Um, and Gonsolin, unfortunately, is just too expensive for me to play him uh, against Cindy, against anybody. So for me, this this game is just going to be a pass. But look, before I officially pass that game, let me just make sure that I'm not doing something stupid and and fading the Dodgers for without good cause. No, I don't. I don't really have. Um, no, I don't really have them. Um, uh, showing up for me. So, I a uh, couple more games here. You have Oakland against Seattle. Now, like it or not, I uh, have to talk about this one because both of these guys, Gonzalez and Caprillion, are showing up as 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 fringy value plays. Okay, when I say fringy value plays, I mean these are plays that you would make if you really wanted to just get all the hitting you want. Okay. And there's a certain degree of wisdom to that. You know, if you, you're going to have to fade Burns and Cole to do it. Good luck, you know? Um, but if you want to do it, um, I, I do like both of these guys. Uh, Gonzalez, you know, first of all, they're both going to be really low owned. Gonzalez and Caprillion. And neither team that, you know, that they're facing is that great. Not that these pitchers are that great either. Um, and that's why they're going to just show up as kind of fringy plays. But I do think that they are very, very reasonable SP twos, uh, to go along with say a Burns play. Um, you know, if you don't want to play Keller, if that game doesn't go, I think that the Gonzalez slash, um, what's his name? Uh, Caprillion, uh, certainly work. And, uh, they're both, you'll be low owned and we'll free up some salary for some hitting, um, with respect to the hitting, uh, in this game. Let me just double check that. I didn't, I didn't have anything. I don't think um, either Seattle or Oakland. No, I mean, if anything, I mean, they're fringy. I have like seventh best value or something. I, I, don't, I just don't think I'm going to do it. And uh, the final game uh, on the list, you have the White Sox against uh, uh, San Francisco, Alex Cobb against Lance Lynn uh, pitching. And let's start with Lance Lynn, I guess. I guess Lance Lynn, I have him very similar to, to get James Caprillion with respect to, his, to being a decent SP2. I have him very similar to Marco Gonzalez with respect to being a decent SP2. Certainly not a great matchup against San Francisco, but, you know, he's, Lance Lynn's been around. I mean, he's got tricks. He still has some strikeouts in there somewhere. Um, he, you know, he had a really rough go to start off his, his return. Then, you know, not so great in the next one, not so great in the next one. You know, he hasn't really got anybody out, but at least he's getting some strikeouts. <laughs> they let him in for 110 pitches, uh, even though he'd given up five runs. So you have no problem with his leash. I guess you got that going for you. I mean, what I would consider doing really is, you know, you have this block of these last four, this, this, these late night hammer games, these 10 o'clock pitchers. And between Lynn, Caprillion, and, and, and Gonzalez, I think you should try one of them because it comes with it, the ability to pivot, the ability to swap, the ability to do other stuff. I think, I think that's actually a pretty good idea. Um, and Alex Cobb, I have him just below that group. Um, 
which means that I do give you permission to play him. I think Cobb is also a pretty legitimate SP2 um, to go along with Burns. Um, with respect to the hitting, mm, I didn't think I had anything between Chicago and San Francisco. Let me just double check. Um, no, not, not really that much at all. So, um, it would just be taking shots at these SP2s. Okay. So to summarize the, the early look, first of all, summarizing the weather outlooks in light of what we said, uh, Boston at Chicago, uh, that's not actually even part of the main slate, right? Um, is that right? Yeah. So I'm not worried about that. Atlanta, Cincinnati, that's not even part of the main slate, so I'm not even worried about that. Casey and Detroit and Yankees, Cleveland, I'm worried about that. So uh, relevant from those games are Garrett Cole, uh, the Yankees as a stack, Kansas City, I mean, uh, Brad Keller as a pitcher, and Detroit as a value stack. I think they're so all in play, should, you know, watch the weather for that. And then with respect to construction, again, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to play Javier just on principle coming off of the big ceiling. Feel free to do so. He is ranked second by me. But I'm not doing it. I am going to play zero. And uh, I'm probably just going to go play Burns with a bunch of those, those SP2s and hope, uh, and hope the right ones get there. Uh, I, I'm pretty confident in the Burns play. He's going to be 50% on plus, but I'll eat that. And um as far as hitting goes, I'd like the Yankees to play because I kind of want to play them. Minnesota is going to show up as a pretty good play. And Houston, you know, I think Minnesota and Houston are the plays to pivot off of the Arizona, Colorado chart. At least that's the way I see and Milwaukee. Sorry about that. And that's at least the way I see it for now. Um, I'm not going to be around later. Uh, so hopefully Bobby can get in there. Aside from that, uh, good luck, and you'll, you'll, you'll see me maybe from time to time over the weekend. Uh, have a happy uh, July 4th and all that good stuff. And as Mr. Rody would say, let's get it.